in this amazing video we are going to learn about control valve positioners if you look at a positioner you will notice these three pressure gauges what do you think is the reason to have these three pressure gauges what if i tell you before that that ideally there is no need of a positioner in the first place yes we'll understand with the help of hooke's law imagine that we have a actuator assembly here which is connected to our plug and seat assembly now do you notice the force will come from the upper direction because it is an air to open valve so the air pressure force will come here and that will basically have displacement of the spring it is called as x so as per hooke's law the force f is proportional to the displacement x that means that the force if we put a proportionality constant k in between we'll have f is equal to the spring constant into the displacement now this is very important but this equation has one major flaw if you notice the force is actually not directly impacting the spring it is negatively impacting that means the spring is opposing the force so we get a minus sign here this is what forms your hooke's law the important thing to note in hooke's law is that it is linear and repeatable this is one of the most important thing that an engineer must know and then when we hook it to an i2p converter what we have is imagine the 4 to 20 milliampere signal that is coming from your control system can be then calibrated to 3 to 15 psig which will then be useful for you to control the valve so for example let us say the control system signal comes as 4 milliampere the i2p converter will convert it into 3 psig which is what we can say maybe as a valve close position and then you get 20 milliampere from the control system that from an i2p converter would convert to 15 psig and that will be equal to the valve's open position now this is what is called as the bench range in order for you to understand it even more properly with a practical demonstration let us take an emerson example where they calibrate an actuator for 3 to 11 psig range at 0 psi the spring is pushing the actuator to the upper travel stop this is important because bench set is always calibrated from the upper travel stop the stem does not move as i increase the pressure from 0 to 3 psi due to the initial compression of the spring At 3 psi we see the first movement of the actuator. This pressure where the initial movement of the actuator stem is detected is the lower bench set value. As I continue to increase pressure in the actuator, the stem continues to stroke down and as I approach 11 psi I have reached the rated travel of the valve 3 quarters of an inch. the our actuator assembly here the force is coming from the top and the spring is opposing the force and because of hooke's law and just using an i2p converter we don't need a positioner to control a valve and that is what how initial control valves used to work but why do you see thousands of control valves with positioners because if you see there are more hidden forces acting for example the packing friction the fluid forces which are absolutely unpredictable and they attack the hooke's law there is only one thing that can save us and that is a positioner and your positioner basically works nothing but like a little control system and we will try to actually prove this point so for example let us take here actuator assembly and we have a little control system which is nothing but the positioner and the control system gives a signal of 4 milliampere this signal goes to control system which is the set point here and then you get the feedback from the stem as to where is the exact position here that is called as a process variable which is to be controlled and then you have the air supply which is going to the actuator the control system will control the air supply which is generally maybe say 4 bar or 58 psi for example and as it controls the air supply it will try to throttle the air such that it controls the position of the stem and plug so for example let's say 4 milliampere signal comes from the control system the i2p converter will convert it and ideally it should be 3 psig which will be passed on so from the air supply only 3 psig is passed on to the actuator the stem is then tried to see its position the, the feedback assembly for example says that it is still not in the closed position so the control system would eventually then reduce the air supply up till even 0 psi so that the stem is able to come into its closed position just because of the spring tension so for example here if you notice even though for 4 milliampere ideally 3 psi would be sufficient but maybe because of the spring forces or for packing friction etc the force actually required was 0 psi d to get it into the completely closed position this is how our little positioner works here like a control system but there have been a lot of advances in positioner system for example if you see here this is mechanical linkage but this is absolute 
most of the positioners that now come in the market have linkage less connection for example this is the emerson control valve positioners where you see where there is a linkage less connection available notice that the positioners now have digital processing and advanced diagnostics so you already get to know beforehand whether the control valve is going to fail is the packing going to fail is there fugitive emissions happening or any other issues can easily be diagnosed before even the control valve failing but still we have not answered the initial question why are there three pressure gauges usually available the answer is because it will help you to troubleshoot what is the issue with control valve how will it do that this is a system which we just saw so for example one gauge is put near the air supply so you get to know whether the air supply is available the second gauge is generally put at the output of the positioner and the other gauge is put at the set point related to the bench range what we just saw let us try to actually understand how will this help you get to the plant and you realize your control valve is not working the first thing you check is is the air supply proper so if you see that okay the, the first gauge is showing you 58 psi or 4 bar that means the air supply is good enough then you check is the itp working or not so for example here the output shown is 3 psi for a 4 milliampere signal that means your itp is working properly then you get to the third point is the positioner giving the correct output or not and that is how you can troubleshoot a lot of issues that can happen in any control valve for almost eight years i've been maintaining notes on whatever i learn from books such as control valve premier isa guides etc and a lot of information i've tried to condense in my ebook called as control valve master it's a completely free ebook that is available and there have been almost 10,000 plus downloads of the ebook from engineers like shell dow technip emerson just to name a few if you're interested you can download this ebook and also join a newsletter where i share learnings from all of these ebooks free every single week 